What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lotus Asakura, the one who never knows best. And in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about mods in Tekken 8. So if you haven't heard, if you haven't been around, there's been a lot of action being taken by Bandai Namco when it comes to the modding community in Tekken 8. And this has obviously been a hot topic of conversation uh, within the community with a lot of people being opposed uh, to this action and basically saying Namco is actively killing their game by not allowing people to mod it. And I have a number of thoughts and opinions and feelings uh, on this whole situation. We also have some tweets that we're gonna take a look at. But I think before we even dive into that, I wanna say that I see both sides of the argument, but I do think that they're probably making a mistake with what they are doing. And I don't necessarily agree uh, with the action that Namco is taking, even if they are entitled to take said action. I currently don't even own the game on PC. I play on console. I have considered picking it up on PC just because I just tend to pick up games on multiple platforms at times, especially with being a content creator and playing with multiple different people, whatever. It's not really been the case because this game has crossplay, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, um, I don't have the game on PC, so I don't have any mods installed for Tekken 8, haven't and didn't plan on it anytime soon. Uh, and even when it comes to Tekken 7, I never once had any mods installed for that game. I went the entirety of Tekken 7's lifespan without using mods. Granted, I spent the majority of those years playing on console, but for the last at least like two to maybe three years of the game, I was playing on PC and I never used mods. Now, that being said, I have used mods in other games. I'm not ashamed to admit that. I'm not afraid to admit that. I mean, plenty of us use mods in plenty of games like Monster Hunter, for example, I play a lot of Monster Hunter World plenty of mods I have in that game. I say plenty, I, my fair share, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's still Monster Hunter at the end of the day. I ain't doing none of the crazy stuff. Um, but you know what I'm saying? Like I, I have some modifications just to like change the looks of some of the weapons or you know change the way some of the, the suits of armor look, whatever, to, to something that I think looks cooler, just stuff like that, like cos cosmetics. And at the end of the day, that's what the, the biggest thing is that, they, that they're attacking is cosmetics. I understand that obviously like cheating is one thing. People are doing like different hacks or whatever, uh, having frame data be on display while you're in a match, uh, one hit KO mods, things like that. Like a, a lot of like obviously blatant, like, okay, this has to go breaking terms of service, breaking EULA, everything like that. When it comes to the cosmetic stuff, I was a bit more understanding when it was just like, okay, they're recreating costumes. Namco's trying to sell costumes. So they're kind of striking those down because they're trying to make money and profit off of it. It's like eh, kind of scummy, but like, I get it. And like, again, you want, I, you want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's, you know, these, these businesses, these, these corporations, they're faceless, they're heartless. So there's no reason to like give them the benefit of the doubt or like suck up to them or anything like that. And Lord knows Namco ain't got me in their pocket, you know what I'm saying? Or vice versa. Like they don't give me a cent. They don't give me a dime. I'm not sponsored by Bandai Namco. They don't fly me out to events. I, I don't get special privileges or anything like that. Um, but with that being said, uh, you know, th th there's no reason to like blindly defend them. And I don't feel like I can blindly defend uh, what they're doing because when it comes to people like creating stuff like put, ha making it so that cause you can wear a pair of Jordan ones or even you DJs out there with the Raina mod that has her in Cl Calvin Klein underwear. It's like that, that shit is harmless. You know what I'm saying? That's not hurting anybody. It's not hurting Bandai Namco's pockets. It's not affecting gameplay. And I'm kind of in favor of, of letting stuff like that rock. But it, it's very clear and very evident right now that Bandai Namco is not. And so that leads me uh, into the first tweet that I actually want to show you guys. So let's go ahead and jump over to my monitor. And here you can see we have a tweet that comes from uh, Dennis Stanistan, which is a, a modder in the community. And this is a email that he received uh, from Bandai Namco. And it says, Dear Registrant, Bandai Namco is the owner of numerous registered trademarks, including the Bandai slash Namco trademarks uh, Tekken. As you are no doubt aware, these trademarks are used to identify, advertise, and promote Bandai Namco's products and activities. It has come to our attention that you are using Tekken's copyrighted images, logos, or other visible or concealed text within your website located at TekkenMods.com without having obtained prior written authorization. By doing so, you intentionally seek to attract internet users to your website. This unauthorized use of Bandai Namco's intellectual property falsely suggests Bandai Namco's sponsorship or endorsement of your website. This practice infringes on Bandai Namco because exclusive intellectual property rights. We demand that you immediately remove all Tekken copyrighted images, logos, or other visible or concealed text within your website located at the following URLs. And then it leaves a link to the uh, the Devil Reign of Mod, I suppose, for TekkenMods.com. Uh, please respond within five business days in, in indicating the actions you have taken to resolve this matter. Sincerely, Bandai Namco Brand Protection. Uh, there's a follow-up email that we'll read here in just a moment, but let's, let's go ahead and dissect this a little bit at first. So Bandai Namco reached out and basically said, hey, like you have like all this Tekken stuff like on your website. Uh, we do not endorse this. We do not condone this behavior. You make it look like you're sponsored by us or as if we are endorsing it. And that is not the case. Um, and to that, first of all, I'll say that like, I don't think there's a soul on this planet. Okay, maybe like five people, but I had the vast majority, 99.999% of people. And I frankly, I just want to say 100. I don't think anybody's going to like TekkenMods.com or or any other like modding website and downloading mods thinking that these are officially licensed or that they're sponsored or endorsed by Bandai Namco. I think that is just a reach. I think that is just a false accusation. I think that is just like, um, you know, just, just, just like a whack point that they're trying to make to make it seem like, oh, it's like, you know what I'm saying? This is a bad look for us, so we can't really, you know what I'm saying? It's like, 
on one hand, I understand because this comes from Bandai Namco brand protection. Ironic considering that, uh, you know, considering the current state of Tekken 8 and the way things are going when it comes to, like certain bugs and glitches, character bounce, everything like that. Like Tekken 8 at its core, I think is a really fun game that has potential to be incredible and, and probably will be down the line. Uh, but there's a lot of negative spotlight on it right now because of things that are existing within the game and things outside of the game like this with their approach to attacking modders and how strong arm they're being and how, uh, you know, active or involved they are with taking down these mods and these modders and these communities. Uh, meanwhile, there are things in the game that haven't been fixed. And with that being said, I think it goes without saying that these are not all the same people. Like it's not personally like Katsuhiro Harada and Michael Murray going around that are programming the game on one moment and then like buffing and nerfing characters, designing these costumes, adding the battle pass, taking down modders, you know, b banning rage quitters. Like they're involved, I'm sure in a lot of stuff, but they're not the ones like by hand doing each and every single one of these activities. I'm sure there's separate teams, that multiple individuals who are all working on these different aspects of the game. So, right, let's get that clear. But also like, I just don't agree with, with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand like wanting to protect your brand or your identity. And like, if it was like a mod that was like, you know, like to some extent, like if it was like turning characters into like competing games, like if you were turning Jin into Sub-Zero or into Ryu and like y'all just don't really fuck with that, like I would get that because you don't want different games from like different licensed properties or whatever in here. And it's like, I, I guess you can make the same argument when you're using like name brand products like a pair of Air Jordan sneakers or Calvin Klein underwear. But it's like that, the reality is that that's not really the reasoning. I would at least try to be a bit more understanding, but that, that's not it. It's just about at first. And that's the thing, too. At first, it just seemed like it was just a matter of we're trying to make money so we don't want mods and that probably is a very large reason for it but you're not making money off the majority of these mods that are that are in because you guys aren't designing stuff that's nearly this cool for one or two you can't get the licensing rights and and, and the uh you know the the get through the legal red tape of getting those types of collaborations like even having the the, the uniqlo stuff is really cool i'm sure there will be more stuff like that down the line but Y'all wasn't gonna sell no Air Jordan ones. I'd buy every colorway if you did, but that ain't happening. Y'all not selling Calvin Klein underwear, you know what I'm saying? And when it comes to like the costumes and stuff, well, I mean, frankly, the costumes I'm seeing some of these models design are like a lot cooler than what you normally see officially in games like this. And so, you know, and I've seen like a lot of people be like, they should hire modders to help design stuff for the for the battle pass or for the Tekken shop. And I wouldn't be opposed to that at all. I think that's a great idea. The reality is, I don't think that's ever going to happen. I think that's a, <laughs> I think that is a pie in the sky fantasy. That would be really great if it did happen, but that's a Cinderella story that I don't don't think will ever actually come to fruition. Um, yeah, as much as I would love that, I just don't really see that happening. And I understand that Bandai Namco has every right to protect their intellectual property and to say we don't want people like modifying our our products or our, our characters or whatever, and we don't want you making changes to the stuff that's like officially designed and like sold or licensed by us. And etc. So like I get that they have every legal right for that. It's part of the you know, the end user license agreement and the terms of service and everything like that. That is, I perfectly understand all of that. Equally, however, <laughs> we can say that we disagree with the action being taken and that it's a bad look and that we can feel as though it is a an attack on not only the community, but your own reputation, because I mean, most other games don't really attack the communities for modding the game. You know what I'm saying? Even if it is something that's, uh, you know, against EULA or whatever terms of service or whatever, it's one of those rules that very rarely gets enforced. and whether or not you want to make the argument that it should or shouldn't be enforced or it should or shouldn't be a rule in the first place, especially considering it's like, you know, well, I own this game because I bought it with my money and whatever, whatever. So I should be able to do with it whatever I want. Same way, like if I buy a car, like Honda can't tell me that I can't swap out the engine. You know what I'm saying? That I can't put these rims on it or I can't change out the grill for this grill. It's like I should be able to modify it however I want. It's my car. I paid my money for it. Right. And so I, I, I understand that. So, like I said, like Bandai Namco, they're entitled to do that. But we're also entitled to look at them and go like, like, are, are y'all dead ass? Like, are y'all for real? Because like I said, I use mods in other games. I have mods in Guilty Gear Strive and Monster Hunter World and DNF Duel, just things that like change the cosmetics of my characters, whether it's costumes or just different colors, skins, whatever the case may be. And, uh, you know, I, I've never, like I said, I never used them in Tekken for one reason or another. I just never did it. Um, but I know plenty of people who did. And, you know, it kind of does suck some of the fun uh, out of the game and, and some of the longevity and stuff uh, by taking it down. And you know, in the past, Namco's just kind of turned a blind eye to it. And hasn't really done a whole lot about it. Like I said, it was like one of those gray areas was like, yeah, it's a rule. We're not going to enforce it that strictly, but don't tag us in it, even though people were tagging Harada and a lot of mods and he would acknowledge it and kind of be like, hey, like, and we'll, we'll probably talk about that tweet later, but like, hey, like, this is cool, but like, don't show me that. Like, please stop it. Like, I, I ain't supposed to be seeing this. I'm gonna let it rock. But you know what I'm saying? 
stop stop that you know knock it off hey you know what i'm saying like it just was what it was but anyway let's move on to the next part of this email or i guess the follow-up email it says dear complainant i have acknowledged your email regarding the alleged infringement on tekken monster oh, okay so this is his response uh to tekken i've acknowledged your uh email regarding the alleged infringement on tekkenmonster.com you demand removal of tekken copyrighted images logos or other visible content uh, or concealed text from a very specific page uh, give the specific targeting or given the specific targeting of said URL, it appears that you are primarily concerned with the con content present on that particular page, despite the consistent structure, layout, and use of any images, logos, or text related to Tekken that appears throughout TekkenMods.com. Very well articulated response, by the way, very professional, with the only distinctions lying in the downloadable files and description associated with each mod on the site. It appears selective to, it, to target a specific URL, hinting at ulterior motives beyond copyright protection, which I agree with. Your concerns that the use of said content may suggest Bandai Namco sponsorship or endorsement of TechMods.com, and there is a clear disclaimer that is in place on the website and the page in question. See, I haven't visited the website for myself, and maybe I should, uh, to be honest, just to see what it's like. But I hadn't actually visited the website for myself because, I, like I said, I, I don't use mods. I don't have the game on PC, so I just never even visited it before. Um, but if they have a clear disclaimer there saying that, you know, not licensed or endorsed by Bandai Namco, whatever, again, it just further shows evidence of the ulterior motive where it's, it's not about, you know, the association or the, uh, the, the official licensing or whatever, or whatever about it. It's, you know, there's some other reasoning behind that. Anyway, your concerns that the use of said content may suggest Bandai Namco sponsorship or endorsement of TekkenMons.com when there's a clear disclaimer that is in place on the website and the page in question stating, TekkenMons is not affiliated with Bandai Namco Entertainment uh, Incorporated, all trademarks are the property of their respective owners. This disclaimer is intended to inform visitors that there is no official endorsement sponsorship or affiliation with Bandai Namco, aiming to prevent any confusion regarding the nature of the, of the site's content uh, and its relationship with your company and its intellectual properties. Therefore, I deny your implied claims that I intentionally seek to attract internet users by suggesting that Bandai Namco sponsors or endorses my website. And he's 100% correct on that. Like I, he's, he's spitting facts with these facts he's spitting. Furthermore, the alleged infringing elements are used in the context of fan-based content creation, which aims to celebrate and promote the Tekken franchise rather than infringe upon or compete with it. Regardless, I forwarded your complaint to the author of the mod. The author decided to take the mod down. Acknowledgement of your complaint is not an admission of any wrongdoing. This communication will be made public as well as any future communications for transparency reasons. Please forward future complaints to the email address at which he, uh, uh, you know, blacked out. Kind regards, Dennis Staniston. Cool name, by the way, Dennis Staniston. If that's his real name, that's, that's kind of, it's kind of lit. Bro sounds like a, like a, like a character. Um, but yeah, so basically like you know nobody's using mods to try to entice viewers into thinking that they have some sort of relationship with bandai namco or that these are official that it's licensed or anything like that it's just about a celebration of the tekken community and just trying to add even more fun and, and everything to to the game and just it's just it's just about fun it's just about having fun like people aren't even making money off these 99 percent of the time i'm sure there are some people out there who do sell their mods um but like you know the, these are just giving out free like these are passion projects by the modern community who are some of the most passionate and like creative individuals that we have out there like in this space and we they should be celebrated and they should be empowered and it's a shame that bandai namco sees them more so as competition or as somebody who's infringing upon their their copyrights and it's like from a legal standpoint i get where they're coming from but it's just like it's like you kind of just it's, it's just a bad look like it's, it's just a bad look it's just not something i agree with it's not something the majority of us agree with and you know it, it is what it is and i don't really know what can be done about it other than just voicing our concerns or, or our opinions or how we feel about it and hoping that they kind of turn a blind eye or they turn a new leaf or that they don't feel some way. But another thing I guess I want people to understand is that this is bigger than like Michael Murray and Harada. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think they're the ones with the final say and stuff like this. And they haven't really spoken a whole lot on the subject or the topic outside of like a couple tweets here. They're acknowledging minds that they've been tagged in. Um, but I, I wonder how much they are allowed to say, because like they are the figureheads of the game and like obviously the producers and everything like that. But they do not hold the ultimate power for everything that has to do with Bandai Namco and or Tekken. You know what I'm saying? I think a lot of people don't really understand that. I've seen that a lot throughout my years as a content creator and as somebody who plays a lot of Bandai Namco games where you'll see people give a lot of shit to whoever the producer or community manager is as if they have like this, as if they're just like these omnipotent beings who have all the answers and are the ones manually fixing every error, making every buff, nerf, fixing every glitch, uh, setting up the world tour, setting up this website, making sure these features function, like designing these costumes, designing this battle pass, whatever, whatever. It's like, hey, yo, yo, yo. Like th that's not all one or two people. Like there is it is a there's a whole company. You know what I'm saying? And it's, it, the, the person behind the the, the, the band dynamic Twitter handle has no power or say over that type of stuff. And like I'm, it's a little bit different with with uh, Harada and Michael Murray. But it's like at the end of the day, they're not the ones changing every little thing. That being said, we have some other tweets I want to take a look at. I feel like I'm rambling and talking a lot. Uh, but it, you know, it's, it's it's a topic worth delving into and something that you know I, I, a lot of people have some some thoughts and vocal opinions on. So let's take a look at some of those opinions. 
Uh, here we have a tweet that comes from a user by the name of Mrs. Play Stuff, who I believe is also a streamer. Uh, this is the wrong direction to go to. And, and some of these are gonna be quote tweets of Dennis Stanistan's uh, original post of the emails. Uh, this is the wrong direction to go to. Having mods in Tekken 7 made more people play and enjoy the game, and the same thing would have happened in Tekken 8. I would have loved that there was a cooperation instead where Tekken actually bought mod ideas and products from them to put in the Tekken store. Or if there was a send in design slash product and the designer gets a percentage of the money in relation to how many of the products is getting bought. Actually, didn't Capcom do something like this where they had fans design costumes and then the winners were actually chosen as official costumes in the game? Because I remember seeing like Jury and Chun-Li costumes and stuff go around and then eventually like the, the winning designs got put in the game. I don't really understand or, or, or not really, I shouldn't say understand. I don't really know the details about how that worked out if the, uh, if the designers for those costumes were, were compensated in any way, whether they even got the costumes for free or if they were given any sort of money or whatever the case may be. I have no idea what, what the details of that relationship were, but that would that would be cool. Again, like I don't know all the legal the tape you got to go through, whatever to do something like that to host those types of contests or hire these these people. And you know what I'm saying? I, also as well, like these games are like designed in Japan and I don't know if they outsource the designs and stuff like that or if it's developed solely. And you know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I don't know how all this stuff works. So a lot of that stuff sounds good on paper. It's a fantasy. It would be a dream come true for a lot of us, including probably a lot of those those modders. But it's probably a lot uh, dip more a lot more difficult and a lot harder than it sounds. It might sound simple, but it's probably not nearly that easy. Um, but I, I agree if there was an ability to send in some sort of designs or products or like, hey, like we like this idea. Can we buy it off you and put it in the game like that would be dope. That would be really, really dope. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, but that would be great. What I will say is that this sentiment is that Tekken 7 made more people play and enjoy the game. Uh, it's something I'm seeing a lot. I even saw people saying that like Tekken 7 uh, was alive for as long as it was because of mods, which I don't really know if that's true, because again, like Tekken is actually one of the few fighting games um that like i played that like i didn't mod you know what i'm saying not that i mod every single game that i play um but like like my fair share like even dragon ball fighters i have some cosmetic mods on my pc version uh that that, I, that i've used uh sometimes and um you know i don't really know how much like stuff like that does definitely help longevity but i've seen like some people make it seem as if like that's the sole reason tekken 7 lasted as long as it did and i just don't really know if that's true and like a lot of people use them for sure but i can't even speak on that but y'all can let me know for sure uh because i we, we have some other tweets we can look at so let's, let's look at some of the other tweets uh, here we have a tweet from Vol Skimmer that says, uh, two people have lost their YouTube channels and others are just one or two strikes away. Bandai Namco is now targeting TekkenMods.com and players' personal X accounts or Twitter accounts, taking down mods at an alarming rate. I'm happy to see others finally speaking out against Tekken 8 and Bandai Namco Entertainment's shady practices. Uh, here we have another tweet that comes from Aero Richie that says, Tekken devs are about to be in the weirdest spot ever after going after the people that made Tekken 7 worth playing online thanks to countless amazing mods during most of the game's lifespan. Uh, and again, a sentiment that I've seen a lot of people basically saying like Tekken 7 only lasted as long as it did because of the mods. Uh, but you guys let me know, is, is that true? How many of you guys continue to play the game only because of the mods or how, how many of you guys were like, um, you know, were able to find extra fun or enjoyment or like something refreshing or whatever that kept you playing the game because of that? Because for me, it was like, I don't play the majority of these games for the modifications. Like I played these games because I enjoyed the gameplay. And so with Tekken, as somebody who never did use mods in the game, I'm not trying to come off as holier than now. I'm not better than you because I didn't use them. But what I am saying is that like, I kept, I came back to Tekken over and over again throughout the years just because I enjoyed the game. You know what I'm saying? And I, yeah, I saw some stuff here or there that I thought about doing it. But I was just like, ah, I just don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I cared about the game, you know? <laughs> you know what I mean? So for me, like that wasn't a factor, but for a lot of you guys, it might've been. So you can let me know in the comments down below how true that is. And if there was like mod content out there that you were consuming or like somebody's videos who you watched because of that, or you got into the game because of this or that mod or you know, certain videos or creators you were watching, you know, that, that, that fall in line with like that sentiment of that idea. Cause I personally can't relate, you know what I'm saying? So I just, I would like to hear you guys' stories on that. Uh, and here we have another tweet that comes from a user by the name of Umin, I believe, and it says, Banco hates me. Most of my Tekken 8 mod tweets have been deleted. I will no longer be tweeting mod pics on Twitter. Thank you. And you can see that they're, uh, it looks like they were hit with several sort of DMCAs or takedown notices, or whatever of tweets that they had that were uh, uh, showcasing different mods for Tekken. So, you know, um, at the end of the day, like I said, I understand uh, their legal, uh, you know, rights to, to do what they're doing, but I definitely uh, do not agree with it. Um, and like I said, I have mixed feelings. So it's like, like, I get it. Like it is against like their, their, their EULA, the, the, the end user license agreement, but it's like, Come on, bro. How many other games actually enforce this rule? And like rules are rules at the end of the day, but it's just, you know, other games just aren't doing this. And like, I, like when it was like, oh, they're, we're, we're reselling you this costume. So we don't want you to give it away for free. It's like, okay. Like you, you try to give the benefit of the doubt, be a little bit understanding, but it's like, 
when you're not letting people like design like swimsuits or like this jacket i saw like some cyber jacket or whatever that was really cool like you know these jeans or these shoes whatever and people just want to make the characters look cool and it's like and then the costumes that you are giving are like far and few between you know what i'm saying they only come every so often and it's some of the stuff that you are that you are adding is either reused assets or just not all that cool it's like it's like bro you you only you only hurting people that just want to help support the game you know what i'm saying and it's just one of those things where it's like it just it just sucks it's, it's, it's just it's just it's just kind of a shitty situation where yeah, this is just the insult to injury at the end of the day, because it's like, obviously the game is not in the most amazing state and like, it's still playable. It's still fun. I'm still having a great time. I'm still been playing basically every single day, but it's like with the bugs and glitches that currently exist with the uh, seemingly aggressive monetization that they're, they're, they're adding into the game. And just like with everything going on, it's like on top of all that, it seems like they're putting a lot of effort into taking down modders where, whereas we're not necessarily seeing the, the same level of effort put into improving the actual game itself. Uh, it's just like, it's like, yo, like, do y'all actually care about the game or or not? Because it doesn't feel that way based on like what we see. Like the optics of it are really bad. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, I like I I want to support the game. I want to be optimistic. I'm really enjoying it. I'm genuinely having a lot of fun, and you know, I, I want to be one of the more positive people talking about the game because I've I've done my fair share of dooming when it comes to stuff, man. And I'm trying to trying to be different with this one, but it's they're making it hard. They're definitely making it hard. So I don't know. I think I think they should let modding rock. If you want my honest opinion, that's just me. Y'all let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hit this video with a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already so you can stay tuned for all this content upon bringing you. With all of being said, that's pretty much off today. And remember, let's get out of this from the bat. Later.